Hey, 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 friend. Thank you so much for joining me again for another episode of Side Hustle Growth Podcast. I really appreciate you uh, being here with me every single week, sharing and commenting and implementing into your own side hustles. I hope you are. Let me know if you are, please, please. Before I get into it, you know, you have to let me know how you are doing. Find me on Instagram or LinkedIn at Kristen and James, Kristen and James anywhere you can find me let's look for the girl with the purple lipstick and that is me so today it's another in my business episode i had started these in my business episodes just to share what my experience has been like as an entrepreneur and i want to be very transparent i want to share the icky sides of of entrepreneurship as much as the successful sides i feel like it's really really important i do this with my clients i'm very very transparent so i feel like it's super important to do that with you as well um as my i'm trying to figure out are you like the side hustle crew the side hustle posse what are you like let me know holla at your girl let me know what you think i should call you i mean here we are like what four years into this podcast i'm still trying to figure out what to call you <laughs> so okay get it back bring it back cj so today in this in my business episode i want to talk about those transferable skills i'm always talking about leveraging your nine to five to benefit your side hustle and i want to talk about the most transferable skills skills that I acquired at my, while at my nine to five, that really helped me grow as, as an entrepreneur. So, you know, on this podcast, we unpack strategies, strategies, stories, the successes of side hustlers like you. Always remembering that our journey is filled with valuable, okay, valuable lessons from our nine to five experiences. So in this episode, I'm just sharing my personal insights on leveraging transferable skills to fuel the growth of, of, of myself as a side hustler then and as a full-time entrepreneur now. So let's dive right in. The first thing I want to touch on is leadership. And in that leadership, it was navigating difficult conversations, which I had to do quite a bit in a leadership position. And at the time I thought, oh, Why me? Because I'm typically not a very confrontational person. And I saw this as a form of confrontation, but I did what I had to do in order to get the job done. You know, and I found my own way of doing it by adjusting my approach based on who was in front of me. In my journey as a side hustle success coach, I have found that this skill has been a game changer. So what I thought was, ugh why me is now like oh my god this is amazing like because i could it's now about negotiating contracts and handling client concerns and even how to delicately let someone know that they aren't a fit to continue our partnership be it with a client or a possible collaboration but being able to be assertive enough to stand firm in my points of view and as well and especially my values all while reading the room and being mindful of the nature of the relationship who was in front of me all this came from navigating those difficult conversations those difficult relationships while at that leadership position in my nine to five so much so it got its own episode back in march 2023 so be sure to go and check that out if you're looking if you're learning a little bit more about this if you're new here be sure to go and check out that podcast about that episode about navigating difficult conversations and how that helped me with my entrepreneurial success next is communication nice piggyback off the previous point i'm just building on talking about communication essentially now here's the thing with communication understanding the different styles was pivotal in my corporate career and now also as a side hustle success coach because it's not just the verbal part of communication but especially the non-verbal, being able to pick up on those cues because most of the conversation typically happens when nothing is being said. So understanding not only that people communicate differently, but also that how I prefer to be communicated with is not necessarily how I should communicate with someone personality types that comes into play 
and just knowing to not take things personally, especially when I know that I didn't do anything or say anything to warrant a comment or an action. People are going to do what they're going to do. They're going to be who they are. They're going to say whatever they want to say. And is that really, what does that have to do with me? So how I communicated in meetings that involved management, aka the higher ups, um, as compared to how I communicated with my own team or how we, I communicated when it was everyone in a meeting. Okay, something else I want to touch on, we'll be talking about communication. Emails, Woo. a tone of an email can be misconstrued. Can it not? Girl, hmm. you need to learn how to be delicate in them professional settings. I can't tell you how many times I received an email and I read it and I, I was like, I oh, know, I oh, know she didn't. <laughs> and I would hit reply. This was really, really key. I'd hit reply and I would remove the recipient and then I would get what I really wanted to say off my chest. Just get it all out, clacking away at the keyboard, get it, get it all off my chest. And then I would delete <laughs> everything I said and then proceed to send the quote unquote professional response. It saved my sanity so much that I encouraged my team to do it, which is, I'm like, remember to remove the recipient so you're not sending something by mistake. The reality is that there's a time and a place for everything. And telling someone about their parts would have landed me in an HR meeting anyway that I could have absolutely avoided because they came at me with a certain tone doesn't mean I have to go back at them with that tone. So that dance of communication, communication styles, personality types, nonverbal cues, all of that I picked up while at my, my nine to five. So pay attention to your communication, pay attention to how you prefer to be communicated with, how you respond to certain people and what they say or don't say to you. All of that will come into play as you're running your own business. Okay, this third part, networking, we're still building. We talking, talk, talked about communication, now we're going into networking. A skill, whew, I honed in on this one, countless times at many, many, many company events. Whenever there was something going on, especially for like a Black History Month, I made sure to attend. I got to meet others from like different departments I didn't even know existed, or maybe they were at different locations. I would rub shoulders with the VP because they were in their like after hours mode. So typically they weren't as stuffy. And you know what? A lot of VPs, at least in my experience, a lot of them were very approachable anyway. Maybe it was just a company I worked with, but in those, in that after hours mode, get to rub shoulders and ha 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 and go follow it up with them and, and meet different people. And I would go to these events alone, so I would have to meet others because I'm not going to go to this event and then sit in a corner by myself. I mean, you could do that if you want to, but then what's the point of going to a networking, a networking event? And it always worked out well for me. And um, can we talk about the free food? Like, why would you not even be going to the company event? You are getting free food. Come on now. Get on that. You're missing out if you're skipping out on these company events. And you never know. You never, ever, ever know who you will meet that will help you to get ahead later on. I remember I was asked to share the opening remarks at a Black History Month event. It was a pretty big deal. And that was simply because I was at a networking event. I was at the right place at the right time talking to the right person. I think I sent them an email afterwards kept in touch with them and they were like, hey, do you want to do this thing coming up? And I'm like, oh my God, this is, wow. It was such a huge deal for me. So networking is always key, especially in growing your business. You'll quickly learn it's easier to move ahead when you have a community to properly grow your side hustle. So get to those events, folks. And now we're on to mentoring and coaching. Ooh, yes, yes. I hope you are leveraging this. Let me tell you about my experience uh, doing this at my nine to five. So it's an integral part of corporate culture to learn about it through job shadowing. 
I would sit with others from different departments or heads of those departments and I would ask questions uh, about their role, what and how they learned, how they deal with different scenarios. And I would just stay curious. People love talking about themselves especially about their professional accomplishments when they've moved up within the organization and somebody else is sitting there is curious and asking them about about their experience and their journey and so have some questions ready and they will become your mentors you can reach i reach out to them afterwards if i saw them in in the hall or in the elevator you know it was very easy to have those conversations again when they asked me how things are going and you just continue to reach out to them afterwards don't reinvent the wheel sis you can learn so much through soaking it all up from someone else who has been on the journey that you're trying to embark on especially if you don't plan on leaving your nine to five anytime too soon if at all if you're planning to leave your nine to five you're trying to do the nine to five uh, side hustle life managing the two of them it would be really crucial really key to learn from others and to find a coach and a mentor or you can just be out to girl cj you know that and a key component of my role as a people manager as they would call us was coaching so i was flexing my coaching muscles from time every time i had to sit down with an employee and talk to them about their professional development and talk to them about how they what they what skills they want to improve on and what departments they want to go to that's exactly what I'm doing now as a, as a, a side hustle success coach. I have now shake, taken that, those experiences, those, how I had those conversations, and I've now applied them to, to my own business. And here's another segue. And I really hope you're doing this already. And I know you are, but let's just mention it anyway. Professional development, my good sis. I can't even begin to tell you how many courses I took <laughs> while I was still at my nine to five and they paid for them. I was building my skills, my resume. I was filling my toolbox as a coach because there were always coaching courses and coaching programs that were being offered. And I was all over all of them. Sometimes I took something simply because I was curious about it. It was interesting and I am a perpetual student. So I was all over those. Don't sleep on those opportunities to learn on your nine to five dime. And if you know it's going to benefit your role and there's always going to be something that you can take away from it that will help you and benefit you as, as just as you develop your personal development, your professional development. If you have an opportunity to learn, you want to learn more, there's something you're really curious about, something you're really interested in, they're going to pay for it. Jump on that, sis. I really hope you are jumping on that. Take advantage. See what opportunities they're offering. See what courses they're saying. Hey, here's what's available. Take advantage of it. I know some companies now are leveraging LinkedIn learning. Get on that, please. Let me tell you, I can't even I can't even remember some of the courses I, I took right now, but I took them while I was at my nine to five. I'm like, you know what? This will really help me in my role. And it would help me with just be always being open to learning. Like I said, I am a perpetual student. It helped me with always being open to learning. And who doesn't want to learn some more? And while sometimes even you could, it, depending on the course, maybe you could do while on company time, you could get a couple hours away to go take this course. You just never know. But look into it. If the opportunities are there, please take advantage of them. Okay. We're almost wrapping it up. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're moving on now to structure. Following a schedule and having a system. Those are musts for any entrepreneur. So having that discipline at my nine to five was actually a benefit to me. Automations and flows and meeting deadlines and scheduling meetings and sending reports and passing your work off to someone else to continue. You see where I'm going here. You're doing it every day and it may seem mundane, but also think about how will this benefit my business learning this? You may want to be in control of your own time, right? So, you know, how can I create my own flow? What would I do differently? I want to see you be in control of your time. So while you're there and you can leverage this and you can learn, do that. There are certain expectations that must be met in order to see your side hustle thrive. Have fun with the mundane things and leverage those skills. If you know there's something that you would do differently, you realize, okay, 
A has to happen so that B can happen so that C can happen. But you know what? Here's how I would do things. Here's how I can automate this process. Because a lot of things can be automated unless you're really like in your zone of genius. Those behind the scene things that must happen in order for your business to flow and find a flow in order to grow, they can be automated. So what can you learn from your nine to five that you can apply to your, your side hustle? And last but not least, definitely not least, time management and self-care. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about that time management and self-care. Honoring deadlines, that's great, okay? Of course, we got to honor deadlines. There are certain expectations of us and they must be met. We are working for someone else, yes? So honoring deadlines, that's great. But it is also important to recognize the importance of breaks to create that delicate balance. I remember those days of skipping my break. Like, who is that going to benefit? Okay. And yes, that was very much a rhetorical question. But then I did. A, I started doing something. I started to have lunch at my desk just so that I could sneak away <laughs> to the parking garage and have a full 45, 50 minute nap in my car on my lunch. And I would come back feeling so refreshed. It, I always felt so good for that afternoon, that after lunch slump. I stopped experiencing that because after you have lunch, you still got, you know, three, four, five hours to go. And I was, I was ready for them. But in skipping the breaks and working the overtime, I realized, I started to realize the importance of self-care. And I started my own reframe while at my nine to five. A little later in my nine to five journey, but I'm still glad I learned it, was setting boundaries. You can say that you're at capacity. You're taking on more. You already have a certain deadline. You're taking on more stuff and more things are being handed to you. You can say you're at capacity. You can ask for help. You can leave on time. You don't have to work overtime. You can leave on time. You can skip a meeting if you have a deadline. We just have to close mouths, don't get fed. We have to be able to ask, open our mouths, use our voices and ask. And I know that, of course, takes a lot of confidence. And I've talked about that with previous guests on the podcast. Be sure to check out all these episodes. But at some point, you know, you have to be able to say, I'm managing X, Y, Z at the moment. What would you like me to to prioritize? What would you like me to focus on? Do you want me to sit here and and to meet this deadline or do you really need me in that meeting? There is a power in being able to use a voice in doing that. And I will say, I will say this, thankfully my manager was a very approachable, very reasonable guy. So that did help. I know that's not necessarily the case for each and every single one of us. I've worked with clients, I'm working with clients right now where it's just like, ugh, CJ, you just, I, I can't, you just don't get it. And there's just so many demands being put on their mind and under five and it's draining them. This is not necessarily, but even in those cases, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much you can do. So I just want to encourage you to find ways to take care of yourself because who's going to do the job when you burn out and have to call in sick? And then you're calling in sick, you're genuinely sick and you're feeling guilty about calling in sick because you're thinking about all the things that you have to do at your job. You know what? If something happened, I remember there was a manager that used to say to me, or he, just to anyone in general, like, and what happens if you're hit by a bus tomorrow? Because you're just talking about like our role and making sure standard op operating procedures were in place so that if you were quote unquote hit by a bus, somebody can take over for your role. So they'll be fine if you call in sick. Don't feel guilty about calling in sick. Maybe I'll do an entire episode uh, just on that. But take care of yourself. Self-care is going to be so key at any point in your life. And especially when you start to run your side hustle, it's thriving, it's growing. You're really thinking about shifting, working on a 3D exit strategy with your girl CJ because you're thinking about leaving a nine to five. Please believe self-care becomes more and more and more and more important. So learn how to prioritize yourself. If it's a five minute break, do something. Even if it's a five minute break, do something to ensure you can take care of yourself. And there you have it, my friends, my side hustler friends, a glimpse into how my transferable skills really help to fuel my entrepreneurial success. That 
slight reframe of walking into your nine to five and treating it as a stepping stone instead of a stumbling block, it can be major in your journey to side hustle success. So I really hope these insights and my short stories and sharing my experience inspire you to reassess your own skill set. Leverage, leverage, leverage before you leave. And as always, thank you so much for hanging with me, for tuning in to Side Hustle Growth Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, all the good things. I really, really appreciate you. I also invite you to connect with me for a 15 minute vibe check. You know, I could share more with you. So visit my website or visit the description. The link is in my description, kristennjames.com. Let's chat for 15 minutes and I can share with you. I'm looking forward to vibing with you, my friend, and I will catch you at uh, the next episode. Until then, please keep growing and especially take care of yourself. Make you a priority. Thanks for being here today.